proud of our, our coaches and our players, the football program, the family here, that, uh, the way they stuck stuck with it down 17-3. I don't know how many teams <clears throat> trust each other, believe each other, have that kind of mental toughness to keep going. Very, very proud of them. We certainly uh, need to get a lot better. But when you have fighters like we do here, that have kept us close in every game, won some, lost some, but to come back tonight and win this one is very important for our program and for, for those kids and these coaches. So I'm very pleased, obviously, about the way they fought. Greg, Chase specifically not throwing a pass in a month and then coming in and doing what he did on that last drive. How impressed were you? It says a lot about Chase. Now, you know, I've been saying all along we have two good quarterbacks. And the way Chase has prepared these weeks that he has not played in games, he, he cherishes every rep he gets in practice. He works in the meeting room and studies things as if he's the starter. And uh, he really came in, did a great job, he came up big for us. Greg, you win while you're a great corner kickoff returns. Uh, absolutely perfect timing for that one. Seems like it's you're really a little good. lifeless, right? I'll tell you what, great job by our kids and great job by Coach Smith. He came up to me and said, I'd like to make a little change here. All right with it? I said, sure I am, Rob. I think it'll work. And uh, the kids executed it perfectly. Really, really, uh, Jeremy Deering, right? What a great thing for him to do it against his hometown school. Coach, uh, first of all, how much did you age tonight? Ah, uh, they're all, they're all tough on your age. <laughs> but uh, secondly, talk about your, your offensive, your offensive line. How they had to adjust, they have a tough time that they can step the front. That's one of the best defenses. It's probably the best defensive front in our league. It's one of the better ones around. I mean, they lead the nation in tackles for loss. That's not by accident. We knew going in it was going to be sledding, a tough sled. The thing that uh, you know, we did it, we found a way to make some, some plays when we needed to. With them, Greg, we talked about Sanu in general, and then in particular that, that catch he made on the fourth down. Tom's a great player. That's every once in a while you get to coach one of those great players. Just got to make sure we keep finding ways to get him his touches. I think he had two at the half. I mean, he, Frank, made a conscious effort to get the ball in Sanu's hands. I thought it was excellent. Hey, were you? At the end, when Chase throws the interception in regulation, were you disappointed in your defense that they were able to move really three plays down to the 10 yard line in that short period of time? Yeah. Defense was in some tough spots tonight. Yeah. They, were out there. <coughs> they were out there quite a bit. I don't know how many total plays I didn't even look. And, you know, we, we have not played, you know, <clears throat> we've been on one of our best paces this year as far as defensive plays we've had to play. They ran 86 plays tonight. They were, they were moving the ball. I thought we made some critical, a couple little errors, you know. I, I, I knew them right when they happened in the first half, and then that, that one drive we made a couple, but I thought uh, I thought they played their tails off and uh, made plays when they had to, made plays to win the game. When you make that interception, go to overtime, bang, stop, and bang, stop, and then intercept it. That's, that's the game. They had every bit of confidence in, in Jeremy, or Jeremy, you know, Everybody kind of confidence in San Santi. <laughs> same, same side of the field. I love that. Yeah, yeah. That was special. What, you know, Greg, what about Coleman? Did you, you know, he's had a lot of drops this year, if you will, and then he comes through in a big spot like that. Thrilled for him. Great kid. Going to be a great player. Sometimes you get, you know, any athlete can get a little mental block going. Hopefully this frees him up and lets him play the way he's capable. You guys saw him in the spring. Just kind of hit a little bit of a slump. Hopefully this pops him out of it because he's a big time player. Craig, are you worried on uh, Savon? Yeah, I'm worried about Savon. Yeah, I, I don't know factually now, but I have to get tests done. I'm a little more than concerned. Craig, yeah, Sanu had uh, seven catches in that game tying drive. Was uh, Do he and Chase just have a pretty good <coughs> chemistry together, or was it just the play calling got different at that point for you guys? No. We, 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 we came out in the second half and we said we were going to consciously try to get the ball in those hands and let him see if he can, you know, do his thing. In that uh, two-minute drive, uh, they've, they've thrown a lot and caught a lot together, so maybe, maybe there is. 
with uh, with uh, Greg, I have to ask you, uh, what about next week? You make a decision on your quarterback situation. You got to give me at least a couple hours to enjoy this one, Hutch. You just got <laughs> okay, to give me. I, 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 I promise you, I know, I know. I'll fight. I'll fight. You got to do your job. I'm with you, but I get. Two hours, right? We get okay. to turn the clocks back tonight, maybe three hours. Okay. And we gotta go defend the triple option. Right? This is our schedule. Triple option, spread, triple option. We gotta give you just a couple hours. That was uh, Harmon, maybe interception in overtime. Yeah. He was banged up a couple of times. He got banged up in the first half. I was afraid he wasn't gonna come back and play. You know, he got a little dinner. And he begged me and then he got banged up again. And I said, Let's just let Zoe go. He said, well, he wasn't having any of that. I said, All right, get in there. Five interceptions so far this year. Kids playing very well. Greg, do you have any angle on the missed field goal at the end of regulation? I'm sorry. Did you have any angle on the miss their missed field goal at the end of regulation? Yeah, he kind of shanked it pretty good. You can see it. From you my right away. Yeah, pretty quickly. So is this one of the more improbable wins that you had? I mean, just to, you know, midway through the fourth quarter, stagnant and come back and what do you what do you want? Take him anyway and get him, Keith. It looked like you were, were you just setting up for the field goal in the overtime there? A couple yeah. of runs right into the line. Yeah, we yeah. weren't going to risk getting sacked and getting out of field goal range or getting a holding penalty or anything like that. You know, I was hoping we'd pop one of those, and we almost did. It was this close to popping it. But uh, I had every bit of confidence in San San, and uh, he had every bit of confidence in himself. He really impressed me this week. The way, you know, he's always been a hard worker. The way he did it this week, you know, from a mental standpoint, from a film study standpoint, Think of a kicker, how much really kick. This guy really upped it a notch. And I think you reap what you sow. Greg, you mentioned on Jeremy's kick return, Coach Smith made an adjustment. What, what set Jeremy free on that? What did you change? The coach saw that they were overplaying it a little bit, and he just made a suggestion. Let's start it that way and then pop it out. I was really, really, uh, you know, we have that in our repertoire, but we had game, the game plan to plan to use it this game. So um, that's a good job of coaching Greg Robin. Just on the fly. Coach, what was this? Did you, was there something specific from Gary that led you to change at that time? Why at that time? We saw him run back into the tunnel for a minute. No, it had nothing to do with any injury. Any injuries. Look, some nights you're not moving the ball. And whether it's the quarterback's fault or not, it isn't working. So at that point, I wanted to try to shake it up. I didn't want to go in and you know come back into the locker room with three points and say, I would have, should have, could have. I've always told you that we've thought about it. It hasn't been the case in the previous weeks. This week it was the case, and we did it. I know there's a lot of conspiracy theories, but there's really only one thing that I'm trying to do, and that's win a football game, contrary to some, some scuttlebutt. Greg, what does it mean to be bowl eligible? No pun intended there, OK? <laughs> <laughs> I know that somebody's the blog or something, and it's just a word. Yeah, totally. What does it mean what? To be bowl eligible. You know, I forgot about that. The kids reminded me that I was just so happy to win the game, and uh, it's great. Six times in seven years. I think uh, you know, ten years ago, Rutgers people might have signed up for that. I understand why expectations are higher, but I'm happy we're going back to bowl game. Wherever it is, I'm happy we're going. We've got time for two more questions. Greg, the obvious um, change was Chase at quarterback, but you made some shifting along the offensive line. What kind of prompted that? And you know, what what does it mean for kids to kind of step in like Desmond at left tackle on the fly and, and perform fairly well? I think it speaks volumes to the family and the unselfishness that these kids have and that this program has. Desmond Stapleton, he started how many games? And he got the motive. He could go in the tank. Instead, he just continues to prepare, coaches the young guys. And when he gets his chance, Coach Flood has a confidence level in him in these situations where he's been there before. He's got some medical things and he can't go 70, 80 plays, but he might be able to give us 20 great plays. Uh, you know, I leave that up to Kyle. I think Kyle does a very good job of having a feel of when to play who. But you know, I've told you we're going to play about seven or eight guys on that offensive line, and Kyle decides when. Uh, again, I love, you know, you look at a guy like Chase, you look at a guy like like, uh, like Desmond that, that just keeps battling. You know, a guy like Sansan who's had some tough spots here recently. Instead of moping and putting his head down, he went and worked harder and smarter and got it done. So really, it's good that they can learn from, you know, when you, when you do work harder and smarter, that it's good to give them results. That's certainly something. That's, you know, it's a tough competitive athletics, right? This thing turns on a dime and we win it. Very easily could have been on the other side. That's the way the cookie goes, you know, and that's uh, it's fun to be on this end. That's what I know.
How significant is Mark Harrison's injury? Yeah, Mark, I didn't think was significant as the week went on. He banged his head, but I kept getting reports, yeah, he should be okay. And all of a sudden it gets to Thursday night, and uh, you know he still says he's got a headache. And then Friday, we're not going to play a kid for, you know, now, nowadays. If he's got a headache that is really bothering him, we're not risking it. So he wanted to play, but we just we're not going to put a guy out there if, if that's the case. Nice, thanks.